Hi Tom, this is Brett Stocker from TechPro. I just wanted to let you know that version one of your app is complete and ready to be integrated with your Super C Extractor machine. Now obviously you can't play around with the app yourself because you don't have the hardware, so that is why I decided to make this video so that I could demo the app and show you how it works. Now here we have the Arduino Uno micro microcontroller with a Red Bear BLE shield and a simple sensor shield on top uh, that I have a slider hooked up to. This slider is just being used to generate dynamic input data that we have been able to work with while testing the app. Obviously, once we integrate the Arduino with your Super C extractor, uh, that extractor will contain our input data. So how the Arduino board is currently working is that it takes in the data from the slider and generates a temperature and pressure value from it. Each value is then formatted into two separate two-byte BLE packets. Each packet is then sent every half second, so the BLE shield is sending out a packet with a pressure value, waiting half a second, and then sending out a packet with a temperature value. These are custom packet structures, so currently only my Android app can interpret this data. Then at every 10 minute increment, the Arduino will trigger a time packet. This time packet will contain a time value that represents the total running time the Arduino has been running. This value will be used to update the internal running clock of the Android app, uh, to produce a more accurate timer on the Android side. So initially I started this project by combining all the data into one packet and sending it out all as one transmission, but I quickly realized that this would cause multiple transmissions to be triggered because the packet size was too large. And also the performance and stability of the BLE connection was getting very glitchy. So this is why I decided to use separate smaller packets of data um, for the BLE transmission. So right now we're gonna jump into your app. Now, when the app starts up, the user is going to be prompted with two notifications. The first one will be asking the user to enable Bluetooth if it's not already on. Obviously, this is required for the communication to work. Um, and the second one is going to be to disable Wi-Fi. It has been proven that disabling Wi-Fi can improve the performance and reliability of a Bluetooth connection, so I figured advising users to do this would be a good idea. Uh, this is not required, but it is a recommendation um, just because it has been proven. So once you do those two things, all you do is you hit scan and the phone will search for nearby devices that are emitting a BLE signal. Once it finds a device, it's gonna display their name and their MAC address. Obviously, if it doesn't know the device, it's just gonna show unknown as, unknown as the name. So to connect, all you do is you hit the device. Now once the app is connected, it's gonna immediately start transmitting data. Um, and as you can see, the NEOs are reflecting that. So as I move this slider up and down, you can see the needles are moving as well. Um, that beep was actually an alarm for the threshold alert. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. So to run through your basic UI, uh, on the top left here, you have an X. This is to exit your app. Obviously exiting the session will terminate the transmission um, and the connection, so I prompt users with a warning about this. Over here we have a menu, and this is where you're going to go for all of your settings. Uh, these two headers at the top are round length times, so in the menu you will be able to set how long you wish to have each round run for, and whether or not to have an alarm notify you when each round is over. On the top left here you have your running clock, your total running time essentially. This is the total time the session has been running, and this is the value that will be updated every 10 minutes with the value sent from the Arduino board. Now obviously we have your temperature and pressure gauges which as you can see are being updated upon receiving each BLE transmission, hence why you have about a half a second delay between each needle moving. Also you're going to notice that the alarm goes off when the values go below 3000. or when the value goes above 4,000. This is because currently in the settings, um, I have an ideal pressure set of 3,500 PSI with a 500 PSI threshold. This way the, uh, the threshold alarm is gonna go off if it goes below 3,000 or above 4,000. So down here we have digital readouts of your current temperature and pressure values and also the highest and lowest recorded temperature and pressure values for the round. Now we'll jump into the menu and at the top here, the first thing you're gonna see is the, uh, the signal strength. This is the RSSI value of the BLE connection, which is constantly being updated as you can see. 
Uh, there's a button for presets, which will be implemented in version two of the app to allow you to save all your settings and quickly jump back to them. Right now, it's just a, just a placeholder currently. Uh, there's buttons for to set your ideal temperature and pressure values, and then to set your threshold limit. So the threshold alarm will be triggered um, based on these settings that you have here. Down here now you also have a couple buttons to turn on or turn off the threshold alert or the end around alerts. Um, not sure why you would need these turned off, but I figured it's an easy way to, to throw that in there if, uh, if that's something you wanted. Now at the bottom, um, there's an option to set the round length time. So here you can set how long you would like each round length to be, and it'll begin a countdown for when this round will end. So for example, if we go in here, and we'll go a little lower than that, say six seconds. So we want a round for six seconds, and we hit start. Now, this is the time your, your round will be running, and say you're answering a call, you're doing something else. Your alarm will go off, and the app will be brought to the foreground um, as soon as that round is over. So that's all running in the background, so it's continuously um, checking the clock to make sure uh, that round hasn't ended. And if it does end, it's going to trigger the alarm and bring the app to the foreground, letting you know that the round is over. So that is version one of the OCO Lab Super C Extractor Monitor app. I hope you like it so far, and I can't wait to integrate it with your Super Z Extractor machine. So uh, after you view this, just let me know how you'd like me to continue working on this project. Uh, ideally at this point, I would really like to test it with the actual machine. So whatever we have to do to accomplish that, just let me know. Um, so, all right, well, thanks for your time, Tom, and uh, have a good day.